All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at double integrals over rectangular regions. And the function we have is f of x, y equals x times sine of x times y. And the rectangular region here uh, is the set of all points uh, x, y, where the first coordinate is between 0 and pi, and the second coordinate is between 1 and 2. And we want to find the double integral of the function over that region R. So we can actually integrate this in two different orders, uh, x first, then y, or y first, then x. And uh, sometimes one of those is better than the other. Um, and so in the first part of this methodology, we kind of set up both versions of the integrals, and then we uh, decide which one we're going to evaluate. So. Uh, we refer to integrating y first and then x as a type one double integral. And uh, setting it up for this problem, um, maybe write the inner integral first. So we would be integrating uh, the function x sine of x, y uh, with respect to y. And so looking at the y interval there, we could be going from 1 to 2. All right, and then after that's done, the result will then be integrated with respect to x, and x would be integrated from 0 to pi. So the, the order of operations of the uh, inner integral is done first and the outer is second. So that would be the type one form of this double integral. Um, setting up the type two, we just use the same function, same integrand, but we switch the order of integration and that'll switch the limits of integration. So still integrating x times sine of xy, but now integrating with respect to x first. And that means zero to pi goes there inside. And then when that's done, we would integrate y from 1 to 2. So according to one of Fubini's theorems, um, if the functions well behaved, these integrals should both be equivalent. And so we kind of think about going through the process, which one would be easier or better for us to do. Sometimes one of these forms is not possible analytically, um, and, uh, and sometimes one of them is just a little easier. So that can be tough to do. You get better at knowing which one is better uh, the more you do this. But um, for now, I would say uh, look at the inner integral and think of how hard that would be. Um, and uh, usually if there is a hard integral, it's the first one that you would do, the inside one. So looking at x times sine of xy, um, that's going to be harder to integrate with respect to x. Um, because that variable of integration x appears inside the sine function and outside of it. Um, it's still possible we could use integration by parts, um, but if we think of y as the variable of integration, uh, then x sine of xy uh, is really just a, a sine function with some constants inside and outside there. Um, so based on that short analysis, um, we would say the type one is easier here. And you could always just kind of start with one of them. And then when you realize it's too hard or doesn't work, try the other. Um, but I think look, doing this planning is helpful. So we would try the type one integral and uh, we will start by just doing the inner integral here in step four. So this is the integral from one to two, x sine of xy dy. So the antiderivative there uh, is going to be negative cosine xy. And we would evaluate that at y equals 1 and y equals 2. 
So the result here, you know, if you use two integrals from calc one, um, the definite integral gives you a constant. But here, since we have two variables, this first integral gives you a function of the other variable often. Um, it could give you a constant, but um, here, for instance, we're y is going to go away, but we're still going to have x. Um, so we use the fundamental theorem of calculus. We'd evaluate at the top uh, minus the bottom, and so at the top it's negative cosine two x, uh, and then minus the bottom negative cosine x, uh, and then we could rewrite that. So that's the result of the inner integral of the type one form. Um, in step five, we then do the outer integral. We need to move some things around here. Right, so now we bring in the x integration and we'd integrate from zero to pi, uh, whatever we got from the result from step four. So cosine of x minus cosine of two x. And the only variable here should be the variable of integration, which is x. All right, so we're doing a couple of x integrals. Um, and the integral of cosine is sine. So our antiderivatives are going to be sine of x and negative one half sine of two x. So we need a one half there because of the two. And then we're evaluating this when x is zero and... All right, so when we put in pi, we get sine of pi minus one half sine of two pi. And then putting in zero, We get sine of zero minus one half sine of two times zero. Uh, and all of these are zero, are they not? <laughs> so zero minus zero minus zero minus. All right, so the, the result here is zero. So the, for, you know, a double definite integral, uh, the final result will be a constant. Uh, represents the volume uh, between the surface and the xy plane for a function of two variables. Um, and in any volume above the xy plane is positive, any volume below the xy plane is negative, and so it's the uh, net signed volume. Um, and so if you have just as much volume above as below, then the function doesn't need to be zero, it uh, just needs to kind of balance, and that's the case we have here. Um, but how do we validate that? Um, so there's a couple things we could do to validate. And I have some listed here. We can calculate using the other form. So remember in uh, steps one and two, we, we laid out two different forms for this integral. So we can try the other one. Um, we can use differentiation to check the integrations that we did. Um, and then we can use technology to compute the integrals as well. Uh, let me actually start with that middle one, differentiating to check the integrations. Um, and we check our antiderivatives.
We're basically checking the work going from here to here and from here to here. Um, right. And so to check that, we would just do uh, derivatives of the antiderivative and make sure we get that back. Um, but make sure you use the same variable differentiation as you did with integration. So for the top one, we'd be doing a y derivative of negative cosine xy. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine, um, but since there's a negative there, that should give us a positive sine. And then the derivative of the inside with respect to y is x. Right, and you see that matching the integrand there. So that checks that off. Uh, we do the same thing with the other antiderivative, but it would be checking with a derivative x. And the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. And the derivative of negative one half sine of two x, we'd have negative one half cosine two x, and then the chain rule would give us an extra two, and the two and the one half multiply to one, uh, and we get the integrand there. So that's what I mean by differentiating uh, to check the integrations. You can take the derivative of your antiderivatives before you evaluated. Um, all right, let's calculate using the other form. So we, uh, in the main methodology, determined the type one was better or easier. Um, let's go back and use the type two form. So type two form. going to use x first, 0 to pi. And then integrating y from 0 to 1. No, sorry, 1 to 2. So that's what we had earlier for the type two double integral. So let's try that out. Um, you know, we recognize the difficulty in doing this inner integral, uh, but it actually can be done. We would just use um, integration by parts. So we would take the derivative of the x part and take the integral of the sine part. Um, and uh, in doing that, we start with the first part, we're gonna take the derivative of, and then we multiply by the integral of the part we're gonna integrate. Uh, we're gonna get this is all with respect to x. So the integral of sine of xy with respect to x, or I guess the antiderivative, sorry, of sine of xy with respect to x um, is cosine xy, but it's negative, uh, and then times 1 over y. Uh, then minus, um, then we take the derivative of the part we're going to differentiate, so the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. Oh, and then this is another integral. Uh, and then the integral of the part we're going to integrate, so cosine xy, but it's negative, and then 1 over y for the chain rule. Um, and since it's a definite integral, this would also need to be evaluated. So when x is 0, um, this first part is zero. And so you just get the part when it's pi, um, which is 
negative pi over y from x and the one over y, cosine of pi y. That's the result of that first part. Um, and then this integral now uh, is much simpler. It's just cosine of x times a constant. And uh, if we integrate again, we'd get a negative Oh, sorry, not negative. We would get a uh, sine of x, y. Um, and then there's a one over y there, but we'll get another one from the chain rule again. So one over y squared. And then that's from x equals zero to x equals one. So that's just evaluating that part at those limits. So when you put pi in here, um, you get sine of pi y. Let's put the one over y squared there. And then uh, if we put in zero, uh, sine of zero is zero, so we won't get any effect from that. So there's a, a minus zero that we can sort of ignore. So that gives us our first integral. Um, we're then ready to integrate for y. And we'd be using the integral from one to two dy. Uh, and this is where we get stymied. Um, there's no analytic solution to these this integrand. So no antiderivative that we can write out. It would have to be numerically integrated. And um, we'll see that that could indeed be done at that point we'd be shifting over to technology so again sometimes one of these types is impossible um, and they'll frequently throw some of those at you to make sure that you are uh, looking at both types and uh, and able to adapt a situation to the one that does work right if it was just a matter of it being easier we probably wouldn't spend so much time on it but uh, occasionally there's only one of these types that actually works um, and so we need to be able to adjust to type one or type two uh, for any given situation to handle that. Uh, but when you can do both both types, then they should give you the same result. So that that integral should actually give us zero as well. Um, let's shift over to using technology and um, using Python to compute the integrals. So using our lab code, um, the first example here, double integrals in Python, I'm going to grab that, copy it, and put it in my sandbox. This is going to use SymPy, so make sure you're running, uh, importing SymPy. Um, but here we declare our two variables, x and y. Uh, here you define your function, and that's what we'll need to change. For this problem, it's x times sine, so we'll use sympy's sym.sin, uh, sim.sin of x times y. So there's our function, and then I've got it as nested integrals here. Um, and um, we can use the same type one form that we had. We're, we're doing this integral first. And so this is the inner integral, integrating f. And we start by integrating y um, from one to two. And then we integrate x from zero to uh, And we instantly get zero. 
Now we try to change it up here and force Python to do the harder uh, type two integral. Let's see if Python blinks at that. It did take noticeably longer. So it's possible there's an analytic solution to that um, or that it some has some complicated symbolic stuff that we just can't do, um, but it was able to come up with the same result. All right, that's double integrals over rectangular regions. Um, we'll look at general regions in the next methodology. See you then.